Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. It's camera time again. I've got a cool one here from Real Link. This is the RLC 423 5MP. Let's get it out of the box. Now, I just recently reviewed the RLC 511W. This is a close cousin to the 423. Uh, there are two versions of this. This is the Wi-Fi version, which is what the W is for. So it is not a PoE or power over ethernet camera. You have to supply uh, a separate power line to it with the adapter that's included. So the ethernet cable, if you want to run the hardwired ethernet connection to it, uh, you will not get power through the ethernet cable, which is what power over ethernet is. What that allows you to do is use a camera with a single ethernet connection and through that connection is uh, power and your data. Now, a lot of PoE cameras can be powered separately uh, with an adapter, which we'll get this box open here and see what all is included. But looking at the details on the side here, it is a five megapixel Super HD. It has the four time optical zoom, uh, 360 degree endless pan and 90 degree tilt, PoE, which is power over ethernet, plug and play, smart motion alerts, IP66, which is uh, basically water resistant, so it's outside, an external SD card slot. If you compare the specs on this camera here, uh, it's very similar with the exception of this one being Wi-Fi, but uses the same uh, sort of lens and uh, four-time optical zoom. All right, so now, now it's really time to get it out of the box. So, let's go through here and see what all is included. This usually has your manual, your quick start guide. Sometimes there's some security stickers in there. Yeah, there's your... Uh, template, mounting templates, you know where to put the whole sticker, operational instructions. Always a good idea to go through these before you start tearing into the camera. Especially if it's your first camera. Alright, some nice closed cell foam padding for the packaging. And there's an Ethernet cable. That's usually used during the setup. There's a weather tight Ethernet connector seal to keep the water out of your Ethernet connection. Here's an adapter. <clears throat> so this is, uh, let's see, 12 volt, 2 amp. So even though this is a power over Ethernet camera, you do not have to use a power over Ethernet connection. Here's your uh, hardware kit for mounting it, uh, your masonry uh, inserts, and a little hex, hex uh, wrench. And now, this is the camera. And this thing is a beast. So I'll go over the details here in a moment, but here's the, here's the camera. Now this one has some different connections for the camera. This is the reset, this is your power, ethernet. Looks like a grounding strap here, this little guy. And then we have another one. This is usually for uh, an audio, external audio connection. So let me verify that. All right, so the next thing to really get things rolling here, you wanna get the app installed on your smartphone. Uh, there's an app for an Android or an iOS uh, Apple phone. Pretty easy to do. Once you get that installed, get your account set up and then adding the camera is very easy. There are a lot of voice prompts usually with these uh, cameras anymore. The setup is much easier than it used to be. There's a, a 2D matrix code there on the neck of the camera uh, that you scan in and that really puts all the information into the phone. So I'll go ahead and just power it up real quick here just to sort of see what happens. Being that this is a PTZ camera, yeah, it'll run through a self-check. So this one can do a full 360 degree rotation. So it's checking all the axes. I can hear the lens there zooming all the way in or out. And now that it's all powered up and ready to go, I'm ready to install it. I'm going to install it on the corner of my uh, the building that my studio is in. But you can see the six. 
Uh, they look like spotlight LEDs, but actually they're not. And I'll talk about that here uh, in just a moment. But you can see here is where the uh, SD card uh, installs. And when you take that little plastic cover off, when you remove those two screws, you want to make sure you put the little rubber seal back in to keep the moisture out uh, after you get your SD card installed. So here it is mounted at the corner of my studio. So I can sort of look around the backyard and see what's going on. And here in a moment, uh, you'll see one of my little friendly visitors coming by uh, for a midnight snack. Now, as far as the infrared LEDs, and again, they look like spotlights, but they're infrared LEDs. There are six of them, and there are two at the bottom and two off to each side. And the way they operate is it depends on your focal distance. So uh, when you're up close, uh, two of them will come on, I believe. Actually, the bottom ones are for far, and the four on the sides, which you'll see here, uh, are when you're up close, when the focal distance is uh, up close, you'll see only those four. So they're not actually LED spotlights. And there's actually a mid-range where all six of the infrared LEDs uh, are lit up, although I don't have it shown. And next, we'll look at the uh, video that I'm shooting from the camera. And here, one of the local critters is stopping by for a nighttime snack. I leave a little bit of corn and water out there for them and he sets off my motion sensitive floodlight. So now you can see the uh, image quality there in low light. So after he realizes that the light is nothing to be worried about, he comes back to finish off his snack. And then here's some imagery. I move the camera to the front so we can see the front yard and I pan around a little bit now I've got the speed set all the way down because uh, when it's up and the speed is at the high level, this thing really flies around. So you uh, hit one of the side pan arrows and the thing really moves. In fact, it's really easy to overshoot where you're trying to move the camera to if you're not careful. So I usually have to go in and set the speed down to one of the lower, uh, one of the lower levels. And now I can move in. Zoom in, I should say. And sometimes it takes it a moment for the focus to catch up, which is pretty normal. And then uh, we'll pan around a little more. And then pan down. And then uh, we'll fool around a little more with some of the functionality here. Okay, so now if you want to do some pan, tilt, and zoom functionality, you come down here and open this little window and then you can move it around and that opens the pan, tilt, and zoom dialog box. So push on your buttons here and you can uh, basically jog around, but what I like is that you can control the speed here. So if I really want it to zip around, I hit this, and when this thing moves, it's really hard to control. Yeah, it can get away from you when it's moving that fast. Now, if you need to move it that fast, then that works out just fine, but I prefer to slow it down a little bit and I have a little more control over where I stop and start. And then uh, the zoom feature here. So if I want, let me zoom back over here. Whoops, a little too far. Okay, so hit the zoom plus, and of course you zoom all the way in, and it takes the focus a moment to catch up. And then you can zoom around here, or actually pan around. You can also tilt. And then you can zoom out. Now you have the focal controls over here just to the right, but usually you don't have to mess with those too much. The autofocus brings things in where they need to be. Now, the other cool feature here, uh, this is patrol, and I've already defined these presets. So you basically move the camera around and then set the preset and then each one of these positions 
I can control how long it stays there, the dwell, and then I can control the speed between the moves. So from 9 to 8, 8 to 7. And then when you want to do the patrol, you just hit the plus, or actually the play here. And it will go through each one of these preset points. So I've already defined these points. And it goes through each one. So it starts with number 10. I believe that's the first one. Then it goes to 9. And then it will move over to 8. And I'm showing the motion, the full range of motion here, just so you can see that it is infinite 360 degrees. You don't have a point where you have to stop and reverse. And I'm not controlling it now. It's all going through each one of these points over here on the right. And you can see I have 10 set and I have several more here. Looks like you have an up to uh, 16 points. And you can hit the pause here anytime you want and it will stop. And you're able to control the zoom feature also with this. So you can move to a point, zoom in, zoom out, move to the next point. Now I named all the presets with numbers, but you can uh, you can name them anything you want. You can say driveway, porch, uh, street. You can name it anything you want. All right, now I'll show you one more feature here. Back to the pan tilt zoom window. The center button, it says auto, but if you click it, it just rotates infinitely. It will keep turning until you tell it to stop. And you can also set the speed so... If I want, I can crank this all the way up, turn it on, and it just becomes pretty much a big blur. You can't really use that for much of anything. So stop it, bring it down to a more reasonable speed, and then it just slowly scrolls, or rotates, I should say. And like I said, I'm not real sure where you would use that, but Kind of a neat function to have there. And next I'm going to show uh, some more functions, but you'll notice that it uh, there's some snow on the ground. So this time of the year around here, it can be 61 day and snowy the next. Now down here in the corner, you'll see a little, like a little blue running man. That's the indication that it, there's a motion event and uh, you can base that on the motion zone that you can define and uh, adjust the sensitivity also. So right there, see that car went by, so it picked up the motion. Here comes another one. And I notice my screen capture software is a little choppy, so it's not the camera. And then when we look at the settings, this is where you can make your adjustments uh, to the camera. And most of the defaults are, are pretty good. Most of the time when I get a new real link camera, I don't really have to do much to it. The uh, default settings are pretty much, I mean, other than maybe adjusting the date or time if that's off, but even that pretty much picks up and it's good to go. Here's your detection. You can set the sensitivity. You can adjust your motion detection zone here. So if I say, if I, I only want to see notification if there's activity out here at the end of my driveway, for example. Or you can clear that out. Maybe I say, well, I really want to only see the activity over here by my mailbox, which is sort of covered up by those trees there. You can just clear that whole area out. You can do the whole screen, or you can clear the whole screen. And then, of course, don't forget to hit the Save button, otherwise everything that you've defined you'll lose if you exit the screen. And then moving on to the audio and light, this is where you can adjust. Uh, of course, it says record audio. Well, this particular camera does not have a built-in microphone, so you have to add a secondary microphone. Uh, right now, it just records video. So whether this is enabled or not right now, it doesn't really matter. But if I do add an auxiliary microphone, then you need to have this checked for it to record sound and you can adjust here when your infrared lights are on or off. 
Uh, the info section here has uh, really the personal info about the camera as far as the critical information. I won't click on that because it has my UID and things like that on there, but uh, this is where you would click to look at your firmware version, and RealLink is pretty good at keeping firmware updated. Uh, surveillance over here, this is where you set up your recording schedule. Now, I'm actually uh, recording everything all the time to this DVR over here, the RLN 16 410, which I'll have a review for it posted here shortly. But uh, since it's recording to this all the time anyway, the recording schedule here. Uh, is not terribly important. Normally this would dump to like your uh, SD card. Over here this would send you an email when there's an alert. I have it enabled here but I don't have it set up. I have to set up my email information but it will send you an email if you want it to. FTP this here you can dump to another server uh, like if you didn't have a DVR or this NVR I should say. Uh, you can dump it to another NAS server. I've done that and, and it works pretty well. Over here, this is your push notifications. This is basically uh, when do I want to get notified of a motion event. So you can set that up to be all the time, any event I'm going to get a notification, or you can set it up I only want it on certain days at certain times, which is nice. And your network settings. This here lets me know, uh, of course, this is not a Wi-Fi camera, so it's always going to be plugged in. It's PoE, of course, power over Ethernet. Some other settings here. Again, most of these things you don't ever have to really fool with. Storage. Yeah, this one I do not have an SD card in yet. And then the system settings over here. This is where you can set up user management. You can adjust your uh, username and password, set your date and time, and then maintenance. This is where you do your uh, firmware upgrade. So you would download the file and then point to it here in the browse section and then it will do a, uh, an update. And let's see, that's pretty much it other than oh, I didn't talk about stream here. Stream, this is where you set up basically the resolution. And the higher the resolution, of course, you know, you buy a high res camera, you want to have it set to the highest setting. But uh, it uses a lot more bandwidth. The higher the resolution, the higher the frame rate, the higher the bit rate, uh, the more bandwidth it will use. And for most people with just one or two cameras on their network, depending upon the uh, strength of your network or how, how, uh, robust your network is, a uh, few cameras won't matter, but if you have a lot of cameras, a lot of devices that are moving a lot of data, uh, sometimes you need to update, get a nicer router. But anyway, that's pretty much all the controls here for this camera. All right, so as far as playback goes, uh, for this camera, if I wanna play back, a couple ways I can do it, I can play back through the camera itself, uh, providing I've put an SD card in it, which I uh, have put one in since I recorded earlier. So you would hit the playback and then drag the camera over here and then uh, come over to this little button here, press it, and you can see it's populating everything that's on uh, the SD card. And then if I want to look at it, clear instead of just fluent, so now I can go back to any particular time in the day. Of course, it repopulates after you switch from clear to fluent when you change the resolution. And then give it a moment and it will go back and find the events of the day. So there's a particular motion event from a car going by and if I wanna download it, I can hit the download and there are segments here. So if I know what time it is, I go down here and look at the time of day I can figure out which window, and I have several uh, screens here, or pages I should say, that I can go through. And then you check the box, you hit the download, and it downloads it, and then you can view it, or uh, edit if you want to trim it, because these are actually big, big chunks of uh, time here that are saved. Now, uh, I can pick different days also. I can go back and pick different days on the calendar. Uh, until you've saturated your SD card and then of course it starts to overwrite it and the size of your SD card determines 
uh, how much video storage you've got. The other way, if you have a, an NVR, and I'm using the RLN16-410, uh, I can come back over and I can pull the video from the hard drive on that. So uh, I find the camera and I drag it over. And then I can go back and look at any time I want. And this usually pulls the information a little faster because I'm pulling it from the hard drive rather than the SD card. So this is late at night. Again, I can click over here. It's already set to clear. I can look at only motion events if I want to. So there's something. Went and blew past the camera there so I can pick another time. There we go, so there's a car going by. And the same thing here, I can hit download and I can select a window of time that I want to download and save. And then you also have the ability to go frame by frame and then you can change the speed at which the playback is happening. So I can hit four times there and it takes that event and pretty much blows by so fast you kind of miss what's going on. So anyway, that's the playback function. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this review. Again, this is the RLC 423 five megapixel pan tilt zoom camera. Really, I love everything about it. The only thing I would probably change would be to add a built-in microphone somewhere on here. It just seems a little strange to me that a high-end camera like this, or a camera with this kind of functionality, uh, wouldn't have that, but I don't know, maybe that isn't strange. Maybe it's just me. Who knows? Despite that, I would still give this the Overclockers Club Editor's Choice Award. And uh, right now on Amazon, you can find this camera for $229. I think that's a good deal for a camera with this kind of functionality, this kind of versatility, especially when you combine it with the uh, NVR that you can get from Reolink. Again, I'll have that review up here before too long. So if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. Uh, there is a cool real link web page on uh, Facebook. It is the real link camera community. You can check that out. They have a lot of people on there answering questions and uh, posting cool pictures and videos they get with the real link cameras. So this is Chris with overclockers club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.